Hi again guys and welcome back. Okay, so we're going to start this section by talking about shirts and ties. Have you ever noticed uh, the types of shirts people around you are wearing? What fabrics they're made of? What types of colors they have? So first, let's look at the different shirt types and their characteristics. I want to focus on the three major ones. T-shirts, polo, and dress shirts. The T-shirt is the most modern of the three. Most of you probably already own many of these, but have you ever thought about how to combine them with other sartorial items to create a specific look? We'll delve into that later on. First, some recommendations. Make sure your wardrobe consists of several basic t-shirts in white, black, and gray. They don't call them basic for nothing. But it is important to have several different colored ones as well, such as navy, pink, red, etc. These will go well, well with most outfits and will give you that needed versatility with a little cost. I also recommend that most of these tees will be with a V-shaped color. It is a very modern and young look and goes extremely well with a blazer, vest and or necklaces. Also, it is a good idea to get yourself several tees with some interesting prints. This is a matter of fashion and what's considered cool today may be discarded tomorrow, but don't worry, in future lessons I will give you tips on how to keep up with the times and stay in the mode. In the meanwhile, stick with, with movie titles, rock and roll and metal prints. You know, Guns N' Roses, Metallica, The Rolling Stones, Star Wars, etc. The background of the shirt doesn't have to be black. In fact, I encourage you to pick white, grey and pink background shirt uh, with your prints as well. One last tip. Do not go for loud t-shirts, as they just confuse the people you are interacting with and will just make you seem juvenile at best. Okay, now let's move on to polo shirts. Personally, I'm not a big fan of them. You need a very specific body shape in order for the shirt to complement you, as we will learn in future lessons. Most people who wear polo shirts do so because they try to avoid dress shirts for whatever reason, but still keep a light business feel to their outfits. The fact of the matter is that polo shirts quickly become worn out and faded and simply don't look good. In fact, uh, in most cases you will probably be better off by wearing, going with a t-shirt and a blazer and a vest uh, than a polo shirt. If you're still in the mood for a polo shirt, please, please, please keep it clean with no prints and no wacky color combinations. As for stripes, as we will see later on, horizontal lines make you seem wider and vertical lines make you seem slimmer and longer. This means that if you have a wide body shape, you must steer clear of horizontal lines and avoid them at all costs. And now, the dress shirt. A lot has been said about this must-have piece of wardrobe, but for some reason there are still many men who shy away from it. A lot of men have the misconception that dress shirts are just a thing for dandies, job interviews, wedding and such. I want you to break this dogma. This is simply not true. In fact, the dress shirt is so versatile that you can go anywhere with it, even the beach. You are welcome to follow my Instagram page and see through the different outfits I've worn recently. You will find that there are a lot of combinations. You can go with ripped jeans and untucked dress shirt, ripped jeans with dress shirt and vest, tucked and untucked with or without tie, chinos and a tucked dress shirt, and, and so on. That is why the most important item in your wardrobe must be the dress shirt. You should strive to make it your number one priority when picking out what to wear whether it is for work, for a date, and obviously for a social event. You will see that the moment you put on a dress shirt, you instantly look a whole lot better. Still not convinced? Still feel awkward and clown-like? Don't be. That's just your insecurity coming out. I promise you that in time, this feeling too will fade and leave you more secure and confident about your outer appearance. Let's talk color. You cannot go wrong with a white dress shirt though some may think it's boring or too traditional. But with the right tie and vest, untucked or tucked, you can get a very fresh and interesting look. So first, get yourself some basic white dress shirts. Now, as white tends to quickly get dirty and turn yellowy on the neck and cuffs, even with uh, high-end designer shirts, uh, make sure 
you have at least a couple of them lying around. And in case it wasn't clear, when the color turns yellow, it's time to throw that shirt away. Light blue is also a very fresh color that goes well with most skin tones and outfits. Some of the colors are also great to have, but the, they transmit a more elegant style. These are red, pink, navy, purple, and of course black. As for yellow and green, these are problematic colors in any shirt type and strongly depend on your skin tone. We'll talk about that in a separate lesson. I don't recommend getting these colors until you're very sure about yourself, as the line between a good look and a clown-like or fashion victim look is very thin with them. A good line to remember is, when in doubt, always go for sea-inspired colors, white and blue. Nautica has based their entire line on these with great success. Now let's talk about dress shirt color types. There are many, but I want to focus on the following. The basic one is the classic, which flatters most face, face shapes. Then you have the spread collar, which flatters a narrow face. The English spread collar, which was initially made for big fluffy ties, but also fits the modern narrow tie and gives a younger look. The cutaway collar, which makes for a bolder statement. The button-down collar, which fits all face shapes and goes well with or without a tie. The club collar, which basically has rounded instead of pointy tips. And the mandarin collar. As the name implies, its origins lie in China many centuries ago. Nowadays, since it cannot be worn with a tie, this color has grown in popularity and can be worn with formal and casual outfits as well. One final word about the sleeve length. Short sleeves are accept acceptable in some cases, especially if you've got some nice interesting tattoo showing off your upper arm or if you have nice biceps uh, you can show off with. But for the rest of the time, a dress shirt with long folded sleeves works better with most outfits, including dress shorts. Long sleeved dress shorts are more have more character to them and are much more versatile, so they can serve you in all four seasons, as opposed to short sleeved dress shirts that are only appropriate for warm temperatures. Short sleeved dress shirts are also much less formal. So combining them with a tie is a great idea and creates a smart look, a smart casual look. The last piece of shirt I want to talk about is the knit and sweater. This is obviously a piece of clothing worn, worn in cold weather and the outermost layer of your outfit under, under a coat. Depending on the knitting pattern and the quality of the fabric, the knit is a fine addition to most everyday activities, whether it is work, a date, or an evening out with some friends. When worn over a light undershirt, it fits all the casual style section. But the great thing about a knit sweater is that you can wear it over a dress shirt and a tie and instantly turn an outfit from casual to smart casual. You have to be careful though, as some knits out there have an older look to them, and so keep that in mind when shopping for one. I recommend colors such as navy, dark red, light blue, purple, gray, and even black and white, depending on your skin color. Recent fashion has seen a growing combination of turtleneck sweaters with blazers. When done properly, it can make for a very cool and fresh look. Okay, so this was a long and important lesson. If you have any questions, please leave me in a comment and I will be happy to answer. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.